genocide. Mm -hmm. This is the, de the deliberate, organized effort to eliminate Christians from the land where they have been a part of the very fabric of the country since Jesus' time. The Archbishop of Washington, Cardinal Donald Worrell, in an exclusive interview with Newsmax and our own John Gizzi, calling the plight of Christians in the Mideast genocide. That is something the Obama administration refuses to do, even as thousands of Christians remain under attack around the world and especially in the Middle East. For more on this, let's welcome in the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Hoekstra. He's currently the Shulman Senior Fellow at the Investigative Project on Terrorism. And Pete is the author of the book, Architects of Disaster, The Destruction of Libya. He's Skyping in from Bonita Springs, Florida. Also joining us via Skype from the Garden State of New Jersey, Ryan Morrow, National Security Analyst for the Clarion Project. Welcome to you both. Uh, Pete, President Obama says he is going to target Christian persecution, but a lot of folks are leery of that because he will not call it genocide. Will he step up and define it as genocide, or are we still going to see a form of benign neglect? Well, J.D., I don't think we've seen anything from this president over the last few months that indicates that there's going to be any change in his foreign policy. For the last three to five years, he has refused to acknowledge this as genocide. I don't see any reason why he would now change the terminology or really step up and recognize the seriousness of this problem. It's been benign neglect for seven years, and I don't see any change in policy, even though the, there's a significant uptick again in the persecution of Christians. Ryan, State Department sources have told our chief Washington correspondent, John Gizzi, that officials are in regular touch with representatives of Christian and other religious groups to find out the threats against them and what America's response should be. Uh, has it reached the point, Ryan, that the State Department and this administration will ever move past polite inquiry? I don't believe so, because just because you meet with members of an organization doesn't mean that you take their advice. And that's what we've seen actually going all the way back to 2003, when this very predictable genocide of Christians, Yazidis, and others uh, began with the fall of Saddam Hussein. And it's, this isn't really breaking news. This has been going on at a fever pitch uh, for so long that even though there is a recent uptick, uh, if you haven't been paying attention till this point and taking action, I have no reason to believe that they will in the future even though Hillary Clinton, as well as the Republican candidates, all agree now, this qualifies as a genocide. So President Obama is, stands alone in refusing to call it that. Well, JD, let us, I could just add Yes, sir, point. go ahead, Pete. I was just going to say, the other thing that we're seeing here, it's not only the Obama administration. One of the things that I've been very, very disappointed in is that the Christian church in the United States of America uh, and much of the rest of the world uh, has really not focused on this problem and put pressure on this administration to move forward or highlight the seriousness of this problem. It's mentioned every once in a while, but it is not something that the church here has really been focused on and been trying to put pressure on the United States government or the UN to please do something. So what needs to happen, the pulpits across America need to put pressure on what Theodore Roosevelt called the bully pulpit to see a change in policy. And this is something that is not the domain of government alone. Point well taken. Let me turn to another subject with the time we have remaining, and that, of course, is the infamous nuclear agreement with Iran. Secretary of State John Kerry made a disturbing admission about that deal. Let's listen and look at what he had to say. Do you believe that any of that $55 billion ends up in the hands of terrorists? Uh, I think that some of it will ha end up in the hands of uh, uh, the IRGC or of other entities, some of which are labeled terrorist, uh, in, in, you know, to some degree. Uh, Pete, your reaction to John Kerry's remarks? Well, it just shows the total weakness of this agreement. One of the parts of an ideal agreement would have been that as we've unfroze these assets and they flowed to Iran,
that there would have been a change in behavior by Iran before we ever agreed to any kind of an agreement from them. But this is scary, you know, that there's going to be more money flow flowing to Hezbollah and other terrorist organizations throughout the Middle East and Northern Africa. And he's now saying, oh, yeah, that may happen. This is a serious problem. And we knew months ago that this would happen, and they were in denial. Uh, Ryan, I have to ask you, Kerry, in his answer, said they're, quote, labeled terrorists. Is, is he trying to, to dance on the head of a pen with some sort of legalistic definition to absolve the administration of what everybody knows is going to happen? This dough will end up in the hands of terrorists? I think what he's referring to, and this is the administration's argument, is that any money that goes to terrorists, well, those terrorists will be sanctioned. So we can respond to the influx of money going into the hands of terrorists and respond to it effectively, uh, which is a false argument because once they get the check and the check is cashed, it's a done deal. And I don't believe that any of these radical Shiite terrorists that are sponsored by Iran um, are going to be any nicer to the Christians than the radical Sunni terrorists. And I so appreciate what Pete said about uh, the church needing to wake up. Uh, that's why the Clarion Project is coming out with a documentary titled Faith Keepers about the persecution of Christians in the Muslim world. And hopefully that will be the tool that wakes churches up. Well, it is something that you gentlemen have issued a clarion call about at the Clarion Project. And Pete, we appreciate your remarks. Ryan Morrow in New Jersey, Pete Hoekstra tonight from Florida, Pete's book again, uh, Architects of Disaster, The Destruction of Libya. You heard what they had to say. Agree or disagree? Send me your comments at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. We'll be right back.